Epiphone ES335 electric guitar, semi hollow, um, almost brand new. Yeah, okay, but is it any good? Well, it turns out we can't even do a setup on this guitar, as in it can't be done. It's impossible. Now, I know you have doubts, but please give me a chance to explain. I'll throw it on the bench and I'll prove it to you. Friends, the most frequently asked question of all frequently asked questions is how much do you charge for a setup? Yeah, that's the first thing people ask when they call. Excuse me. Yeah, just bring the guitar to the shop and then I'll let you know if a setup is a good option after I've had the chance to look at your guitar. Okay, thanks, bye. Oh, uh, make sure you subscribe. Good, thanks, bye. You see? A setup might not always resolve the issues on your guitar. Hence, the old Chinese proverb that says, a setup is not always an option. Welcome back to Guitar Quackery. Now let me take you to the shop and show you a real life example. I have the guitar on the bench. Um, yeah, on the bench where we would normally do a setup, but we can't do a setup on this guitar. Why don't I uh, show you the guitar first? Uh, maybe I can even show you some close-ups. Here, uh, this is the fretboard. These are the frets. The guitar is uh, practically new. Uh, yeah, very lightly played. Okay, that's what it looks like. Okay, nothing much to see. It's, uh, it's an Epiphone, right? ES335 guitar. Electric guitar. Um, now, um, I'm going to show you what the problem is uh, with this guitar. So, one of the adjustments that we would normally do uh, during a setup would be uh, the neck relief or the so-called truss rod adjustment. Now, I uh, typically would use, well, some try to do it by eye by siding the neck, but I always use a straight edge. So let me place the straight edge right here on the uh, fretboard and listen to this. Okay, so it wiggles. I will show you uh, from this angle here. So this is uh, the straight edge. I place it here and you can hear rocking, okay? So there, there's a high uh, spot here. So uh, obviously the neck has a back bow on this side. Now, if we take the same straight edge and place it on the base side, it doesn't wiggle. In fact, I can flex it like this. You see the flexing in the middle? That means there's a gap here. Now, the gap is exactly six one thousandths of an inch, which should be um, arguably the best measurement for um, a relief on the eighth fret. Now that's debatable, but uh, yeah, six one thousandths of an inch. Okay, so uh, these are feeler gauges, and you can see this one, six one thousandths of an inch, which is a point. 15 millimeters. Okay, now let's use this one. Uh, if I place the straight edge here, you can see that it fits between the 8th fret and the straight edge. So that's the gap. And this is, this would normally be 
um, the relief that we want to see on the 8th fret. But we have a back bow on the other side. In fact, I can show you this uh, in another way as well. So if I place the straight edge here, okay, I'm just holding it lightly, and I take this uh, very uh, thin filler gauge, you can see that I can, I can place the filler gauge here, right? Okay, so, and as well here. Okay, and then it bumps into a fret. And that's why we hear this rocking. And we, uh, we can even clearly see the wiggling like this. Now, this neck does have a two-way truss rod. So one would argue, why don't we just crank it up counterclockwise uh, to put a relief on the neck because the neck has a back bow. Well, the problem is that the back bow is only on the treble side. So if we crank it up counterclockwise to put a relief on the treble side, we are also going to create a big dip on the bass side. So this is going back to my initial statement. We can't do a setup on this guitar. A setup is just a regulation of the guitar. So uh, realigning alignment points. But if the foundation is crooked, like in this case, there's no alignment that's going to fix the issue. What I'm going to do is a full level crown and polish of this fretboard. But before I do a level crown and polish, I gotta fix another issue. Okay. <clears throat> so the other issue uh, will be clearly visible through the microscope. Okay, so why don't I uh, show you this? We're looking at uh, one of the frets. It's the fourth fret, and you can see a space, okay, between the fret and the fretboard. Now, if we move the guitar in this direction, you can see that the space ends here, and there's no space here. Okay, so the, the frets are over radiused. I can even show you another fret. There you go. Okay. And once again, uh, the space ends here. So we have little gaps uh, between the frets and the fretboard. They're not seated all the way. So this is what this guitar needs. Um, I'm going to uh, fix the frets. We need to seat them, glue them, uh, do some fret and dressing, full level crown and polish, and then we'll talk about the setup. I know what you're thinking. Man, I'm learning so much from this. How can I make sure that I don't miss this kind of useful information in the future? just click the like and subscribe buttons. And you also must be thinking, well, how can I make sure that this channel survives? There are some links below you can click on. One link says, buy me a coffee. This way you keep me up at night, you know, editing more videos. Uh, you should also check out the Patreon options and some other links like buy guitar quackery merch and all that. So now, let me show you the same problem from another angle. With a guitar on the neck jig, we can see the problem if we use a notched straight edge. On the treble side, we see rocking, and on the bass side, it's steady because uh, the board is straight on this side and it has a hump on the treble side. 
if we turn the tri-beam around and we use um, the straight edge over the frets, we can confirm the issue, which is what we saw on the bench. Okay, so clearly we're doing more than a setup. Uh, you just saw the guitar strapped on the neck jig. It's a then early wine invention. Uh, my neck jig is modified and you know what, I'll make a video about my neck jig at some future time. Uh, now, I'm not going to show you the whole process of leveling the frets, but I do want to show you a little bit of it. I'm uh, using a 12 inch radius leveling beam for this job because this is a 12 inch radius fretboard. Um, it's a, a long leveling beam, so it levels the entire fretboard at once, which is the best way to uh, level the frets, obviously. So as I level, um, I frequently check the fretboard to see if I, if I removed all of the high spots. So when I expose all the metal, when I remove all the red, I know that the entire fretboard has been leveled. So this process uh, takes a while. It could take me about two hours. And once I level all the frets, it makes them a little bit flat on top. Then I need to recrown them, basically make them round again and then polish, which is why this procedure is called a level crown and polish. And now it's time for some close-ups. So why don't we have a look at the fretboard? Uh, the first few passes with the leveling beam will reveal, um, you know, uh, the actual topography of the fretboard because I mark off all the frets with red marker. Uh, the first few passes will hit the high spots. So let's have a look at that. The first pass with the leveling beam will reveal what we already know. So let's have a closer look. Initially, we marked off all the frets with red marker. The leveling beam will hit the high spots first and remove all the red marker from all the high spots. So let's have a look. Here we had a, a high fret. Uh, these areas here were high which is why we see exposed metal. And then these frets here were also high. Again, that's why we see exposed metal. But in this area here, we still see a lot of red, which means uh, that these are the low spots on the fretboard. So this entire area here is low. Technically speaking, uh, the most a uh, tricky part of a level crown polish is setting up the instrument on the neck jig uh, and then really leveling the frets without removing too much material. Then comes the crowning and polishing. But customers don't see any of that. Right? What customers see is the final uh, product or part of the service, which is the polishing. Let me show you that. We are at the final stage of the level crown and polish, which is the polishing. Um, so these frets have been fully polished. These not just yet, not fully. It's an 18 stage proprietary uh, polishing method. Gets the frets nice and shiny and slippery. I know this is helpful to you, right? Uh, I just know. <laughs> so the best thing you can do uh, is uh, to help the community by letting people know about this channel. So uh, just take a moment to click that share button and also uh, copy the link of this video and go on a guitar forum and share the link. Uh, yeah, I, I would really appreciate if you could do that. Now let's go back to the workbench and let's have a look at the final results. I'm real happy with the way this uh... It's, you know, turning out. I'm not uh, completely done yet. Um, so let me show you. Uh, these are the old strings. I uh, 
unwrap them initially and I just saved the strings when I put the tailpiece aside over here. Okay. So now I put them back on, rewrap them. And I did that so that I can uh, file the knot without fatiguing new strings. So I'm done filing the knot. I uh, adjusted the relief and the string height, which is the action. I did not do the uh, bridge, the saddle compensation yet for the intonation because these are the old strings. Okay. So, uh, so far, so good. Now, I want to show you uh, from this side uh, what came out of it. So, these are uh, my feeler gauges. Yeah. Um, six one thousandths is uh, a good relief, six to eight, right? When all the frets are leveled, which they are right now. So here we have uh, the straight edge and with a six one thousandths of an inch on the eighth fret, it passes through, okay? Now, the next one would be eight one thousandths it does not pass, it gets stuck, okay? So now, if I move this over to the base side, eight one thousandths, passes. Next one, does not, okay? So we have six one thousandths on this side, eight one thousandths on the other side. Now, you might be wondering if this is good because uh, we still don't have the same relief on both sides, but this is what's called a differential relief. And it only works when you have a little bit more relief on the base side. In this case, the difference is two one thousandths of an inch. I don't know, but the thickness of a human hair, maybe even less. Um, so this is a, a feeler gauge that's uh, two one thousandths of an inch. That's the difference. So two one thousandths of an inch more on this side because the bass string vibrates more. So that actually works uh, in our favor. Now, um, I want to show you the work here. So why don't I... Uh, uh, pull out my camera, camera phone, phone camera, camera phone, whatever. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, this is what the fretboard looks like right now. Okay, and um, I, like I said, I filed a nut. That's why you see a little bit of dust here. Um, I have not set up the saddles yet. Uh, so the pattern doesn't look correct because it isn't, this is how the guitar came in. I uh, did not set up the pickups, but uh, I did finish the fretboard. And of course, I finished the, uh, whatchamacallit, the knot and the uh, first part of the setup. Now I'm gonna take the strings off, clean everything, put the, a fresh set of strings and touch up the setup. Obviously, I need to do the uh, saddle compensation, which dials in the correct intonation. And then the guitar will be ready to go back to the customer with a correct setup. The most important part of any <laughs> guitar setup is does the guitar play? Well, I guess we're gonna have to try.
I'm done with this job. Now, I'm gonna call the customer. That's it. I recently had a, a, a another guitar on my workbench. Same workbench, just different guitar. It was a Gibson uh, acoustic J160E. Right? Uh, also had a similar issue. Um, and that guitar was also not a good candidate for a setup. In other words, the setup would not really resolve fully what the customer expects from a setup. So that's an interesting video. You should definitely check it out. And now we've come to the end of this presentation. So this is farewell for now. Make sure you click the you know links. And uh, I will see you soon.